This year's Global MBB Forum has reflected how 2018 has been a pivotal year on the road to 5G. Standards are in place, spectrum is being made available, vendors are offering commercial equipment and operators are moving rapidly towards commercial launches. Clearly there will be different paces of rollout. I would say that we see scale in China, uh, where the 1.3 billion 5G connections by 2025, roughly 30% or so of them will be in China. So some three, 400 million uh, subscribers. So if you want to go for scale, you should be in China, obviously. Uh, but when it comes to adoption rate, you would see US being in the lead. Japan, South Korea will be adopting very quickly as well to the 50% or so by 2025. With the technology in place, work is also being done to develop innovative new products and services which will drive consumer demand, alongside more familiar propositions such as wireless broadband. What I really uh, believe is that in front of us there will be a platform, uh, the 5G, the ecosystem, a platform to create new services not seen today. There are several verticals that will benefit tremendously from high speed, low latency. Uh, healthcare being one, auto, uh, uh, um, self driving cars mm -hmm. is another one, obviously, industry, but also how the way you and I will consume content and be part of, of this, this new world with using hologram, using VR uh, applications that will be close to reality. I think we will have difficulty seeing what is real and what is not real. I'm particularly excited about the transport use cases, um, about the e-health use cases. Uh, I think the AR, the, the, the customer experience for AR over 5G uh, benefits compared to 4G, even though you can't do it over 4G, are particularly exciting. So there's a huge range of uh, industrial benefits, smart manufacturing, and uh, there's a lot of these trials that are going on in the UK right now around those. Of course, there are still a number of issues which need to be addressed as 5G begins to move into the mainstream. Is the business model, business to business, from the mobile operators to get with um, other industry like 4.0, uh, industry uh, like manufacturing, like smarter motorways, smarter cities with the local authorities, and that needs to be in place. And I think that is the biggest challenge that needs to be overcome. Well, the challenges besides all the air interface complexity, it's really about uh, the uh, ROI. So because 5G for the first time combines uh, compute and uh, telephony, so you really are combining the two different industries. So we need to play a very strong role. Companies like Huawei, like Intel to push a, a combine of uh, ICT together. I think the big one is uh, upgrading all those uh, masks is going to take a long time. It's not going to be done in a day. They're quite heavy, those antennas. The massive MIMO capabilities mean that antennas are very heavy, 50 kilos. Uh, that's not going to be possible on all the cell sites in the UK or, or in many countries. In 2020, there will be the first uh, real uh, five-year smartphones combining not only the, 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 the first step of the standard, the so-called NSA, as I said before, but also the standalone, which will provide the rest of the, of the functionalities of 5G, what I was referring before as latency and, 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 and others. So 2019 the first, 2020 the real first. While 2018 is seen as passing significant milestones on the road to 5G, 2019 will only see the pace get faster as more operators commercially launch networks and devices become more widely available. I'm Steve Costello for Mobile World Live.